Okay, great. So, here we are recording. It is November 8th, 7 o'clock in the morning. And what we're talking about is we're talking about the idea for a final Java project. And the idea I'd like you to turn in by November 12th. And this final project is really of your choosing. So just think of a non-trivial problem you'd like to solve. So it could be a game, like we've talked about blackjack. We've solved coding bad problems about blackjack. The book has a great example about cards. I mean, there's more games than just cards. There's text adventure games. Educational applications, well, Currently on Memer, there's a, a math game, right? A math application, educational application, where you ask the user to enter in numbers and don't let them enter in words. And that, that is the start of an educational application, right? All right, let's see. Now I'm hearing more feedback. So let's see who's unmuted. Jonathan, I think you're, you're accidentally unmuted. So, you know, some of the projects that we've done could serve as the um, groundwork for the um, final project, right? So, productivity solution. Maybe it could be like a to-do list. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm still hearing things. So, um... Okay, so let's see who's unmuted here. So, Ronald, I think, I think you're unmuted accidentally. All right. So, you really get to decide what sort of final project you do. Now, students have implemented programs to access remote databases using GUIs, games. Sometimes they download data, like... They have the weather data that you can download or economic data that you can download. And if you need help, you can always send me a message and then I can try to offer you advice about what to do. But it's really driven by the student. This is a student-driven final project. Because you're thinking about what you want to do what your interest is. And you know what's interesting is many other instructors, they, they worry that students are not gonna do a good job and they tell me, oh no, you can't let students pick their project like this. They're, they're just gonna wanna like print hello world to the screen. And I, and I think that some instructors need to sort of differentiate between like in introductory class, like CGS 1060, where you still have a lot of students who don't necessarily know why they're in college and what they're doing in college. And yeah, there might be students, might be more students in that class who just want the easiest way out possible. But you've gotten through the introductory course and then you've passed a really big hurdle, which is C++. And then a lot of students don't make it through C++. Now you're in Java and we've spent a lot of time together in Java. And right now there are fewer people here than on day one. Now, this means that if you're still here and you're listening to this, you are someone who has invested a lot of time into this subject and you really want to enter this field. And you're very serious about it. You're not just someone who wants to print hello world to the screen and then just move on with your life because you know that getting good at programming and specifically Java programming, since that's the title of the course, really will have a lot of benefits for your future. So it's all about finding good tutorials that can help you do this project and posting good updates on Discord. I found that the students who made their final project and posted on Discord, 
they got good feedback from other students and they were even more in energetic and enthusiastic about making better features and better features and better features. And in the end, you know, it was just the summer projects were just so, so good. So you will show off your projects during class time. So obviously you need to be comfortable talking about these projects because like you're going to be talking about them to your peers and then classmates can ask questions and then there can be good discussions about these final projects but um, really some people have have done amazing work throughout the years I really love this pile project it I feel like it really adds a lot to the class and it's it's really excellent so if I was to look here at some previous ones let's see let's see what Eduardo did oh this was at the beginning of the pandemic what a different world it was then Eduardo said he is going to make tic-tac-toe okay that's kind of a standard project. I'm not super excited about tic-tac-toe, but that's fine. Uh, let's see what else he did. Um, oh, tic-tac-toe, blackjack, and a slot machine. Okay, that's... Actually, I remember that one. That was fun. Um, I hope the next one isn't tic-tac-toe also. Oh, photo math. Okay. The problem will solve a system of linear equations using a matrix. It will be possible to input the equations manually or by uploading an image to it. I will use a library called Test4J that is able to read text off an image using Tesseract OCR. Then it will simply parse the data contained in the strings into matrices and vectors. I plan to include a simple front end. I remember that one pretty well. That was pretty cool. And let's see what else we have here. Uh, this is going to be an alien game where the player has to dodge multi uh, different types of enemies, level-based with multiple bosses. Some students are more interested in games. And let's see here. All right, so then we have here Kevin. Kevin will be a banking application. The, Kevin will, will create a banking application. The project will conduct simple bank operations like check balances, deposits, withdrawals, etc. Okay, looks good. See what Juliet did. Juliet. Oh yeah, the, she had a nail a nail office. My idea for the final project is to make a program for client appointments. I have a nail tech license, and that is what I do as a part time job. So it would be nice to have a program to save and make appointments. My plan is to have somewhere where new clients can register. From there, open their profile and make an appointment. Yeah, I remember that project pretty well, too. Let's see. Okay, so this one says, All right, so basically I gave it a lot of thoughts, and since I work at Miami International Airport as a supervisor over the weekend, I wanted to create a program that not only will benefit me, but anyone who does my position. I work with flights coming in global from all over the world. My job is to write down on a sheet of paper the exact time the flight lands in Miami, how long the plane stays in Miami, and the exact time it leaves Miami. Since the whole paper idea is such an 80s idea, that is kind of funny that they make him do it in such an 80s way. Um, instead of having loose papers, my program will record more than 10 flights the exact time the plane landed, how long it stays, and when it leaves. 
Okay, so all of these lengths are fine. The lengths of the descriptions are fine. Didn't we start looking at GUIs last class? Good. So we're all on the same page. We did look at GUIs last class. Okay. So you can make a GUI program for your final project. Like something like this would be really excellent for GUIs because most people are going to want to use point and click for something like this. Now, for some kind of math program, it doesn't matter if it's console based or a GUI based, that, that really doesn't matter. And these are the sort of comments I'm going to write. Like I wrote here, Super practical, and I'm very excited about working with you on this project. Love it. All right, so it's going to be things like that. I, I almost never reject a project idea. I mean, the only way you can get a zero on this is to not do it. All right, so I actually just want to get in the habit of introducing something and giving people time right now who who know what they want to do to just write it up and even if you don't know what you want to do you can at least write down some notes on a sheet of paper and you can just spend some time thinking about it so this way this class becomes a lot more lab oriented I know we, we, we've always done a lot of lab work but even trying to do things and then turn them in right now okay so everyone Type out your idea now, and can you use Android Studio? Um, wow, that's ambitious. That's not too common. Um, student wants to use Android Studio. Well, Android does use Java for sure. So um, yeah, you could. That's a, a lot more work than doing like some of the other things I just showed you, like tic-tac-toe or something like that. But that's great. You know, it's good to be ambitious. That's, that's not a bad thing. An Android Studio-based cybersecurity project. Wow, that's super ambitious. Well, I think, I mean, you could tell everybody about it, or you can just write it up in your, in your final Java project right now. I think that everybody in here, if you woke up six in the morning to, to go to class, you're, you're, you're motivated, you're interested in the subject, and now with this last month, yeah, you can, you can tell it now, with this last month, you've got an opportunity to really devote a lot of time to a great project. And... You can build on it and make it better and better and better. And then at the end, have something you're really proud of to show off where you can say, look what I spent a month of my time during college doing. I'm, I built this really cool project and you're very proud of it. Okay. So let I'll mute myself now. I'll mute now and give you 10 minutes to write down your ideas and you'll see it's not due until Friday so if you can't pick one idea now you don't have to do it right now but this is a graded project so you do need to you do need to put something down and if you don't put anything down then you get a zero right so let's all do that
on um, Freer School, and I press refresh, I can see that it was 168, 167, 10 minutes ago, and now we're at 168. So one student managed to get their idea put into the system. And, and I did say we'd wait about 10 minutes, so it's, it's fine, right? Um, like, it wouldn't be good if we just took the whole class and said, okay, the whole class is, is going to be for just writing this and thinking about this. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst way to spend class time, but, you know, there's, there's a lot that, that we have to do. So, if we go back to our syllabus here, we can see 7 a.m. to 8.40 a.m. Professor, excuse me, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, do we have to submit the answer right now? Or come, I mean, I just saved it. Can, are you able to see it like that, or do I need to submit it? Yeah, you have to submit it. So the due date is, if you go back here to, to this, we see the due date is by Friday at 11.59. Okay, thanks. Sure. So, um, but you do have to submit it. That's, that's really important. Oh, now more people just did it after I said that. So, which is good, then now you did it. But if you, you know, don't have your idea yet, then you can just think about it more. And then at some point before Friday, just make sure that you submit it. And well, let's see here. This is free again. Can I ask another question? Yeah, of course. Um, after submission, are we able to change what we wrote? Um, well, I mean, I'll just grade whatever you submitted. And I mean, there's also the time involved. Like you, you everybody has other classes and family obligations. So... If you really invest a lot of time do, writing up a project and working on a project and then changing, I mean, that's not the best thing because then you're just sort of using time. But, I mean, if, if like, you're doing something and you absolutely hate it, you can't stand it, then you could, you could write me a note and say, I have to change because I hate this idea, which is okay. But, there's, but just think of the time. Like, that's why... That's why um, you know, you should like put something that you want to do, but you could, you could change it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Sure. All right. So sounds good. So we have our idea for the final Java project down here. And then we go back here to the syllabus. Let's see. Does anybody know if you use OpenGL with Java? So I'm not a game programmer by any means. But there are tons and tons of, of game engines. Um, OpenGL Java. There's a Java OpenGL wrapper library that allows OpenGL to be used in the Java programming language. Um, the, oh, yeah, I have heard of this. The lightweight Java game library. I've actually had students who have used this. Students have used this one. <laughs> And they've, they've used it to great, great effect, right? Like there have been really cool projects that they've done with it. <coughs> so this, this is a popular one. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend that one because I know students have, have done good work with it. Sometimes the hardest thing for students in their, their game programming is, is getting the is getting the like system set up on their computer so that that can be pretty time consuming but then once they do that i mean you're going to be working based on their api right so you're you're using their sort of instructions and then just modifying it right like here it shows you have an init loop you have an init uh, method a loop method then you make windows and you terminate and like everything is just set up here about how to make the game, you know? So it says here, 
private void loop. This line is critical for the lightweight Java game libraries interoperation with GLFW's OpenGL context or any context that is managed externally. LWJGL detects the context that is in the current thread, creates the GL capabilities instance, and makes the OpenGL bindings available for use. Okay, so this you have to have in there GL create capabilities. Then set the clear color. Well, if you want a different color, you have to set it. And you say while GLFW window should close window is false, go ahead and, or excuse me, not while, while, while they're negating it, right? Then you run GL clear, which this is going to clear the buff frame buffer. We can see from the comments. And then we've got swap buffers, swap the color buffers, and then poll events. And then this is something we're familiar with, public static void main string array art. Now, nobody is saying that game programming is easy, right? This is, this is a challenge, but you are given code to work with. So I would say that working with a game engine is, is an amazing feat, right? That's a really good project for a student. Now, I've had a, a few students through the years who have actually made their own Java game engine, which is probably even like a step up in terms of complexity and time involved. And when you're turning in your final project, you're not being compared to like the top seven students I've ever met from Miami-Dade, right? Because that's just not realistic. Most people who do a good job on this get an A on this final project. So the final project is not something where three people get an A and then three people get a B and then like, it's, it's not like that. Usually you say you're going to do something, you do it, and then you get 100%. Now, do some people turn in nothing? Yeah, sure. Some people just say, they are tired, they don't want to do anything, and they get a zero, which is really bad because that, that hurts their grade. Uh, occasionally, we have students who go to GitHub and they type out something like Java, chess, and then they literally just copy and paste something from here. And the ridiculous thing is sometimes these projects have thousands of lines of code and you know they're acting like they could just do this. Now, if they wrote in their instruction, in, if they wrote in their idea, I'm taking an existing chess game and I want to tweak it for my own interests, like put your own colors on it and put your, put your own twist on it, like, I don't know, make the characters Star Wars characters or something. I, anything is possible, but that's different. Then you're admitting, okay, I did not write this code. And I'm just forking the code, and I'm, and I'm doing something with the code. So that's allowed. But if you just, I mean, this one file that I just randomly clicked on is 1,260. So <laughs> in total, it's going to be thousands and thousands, right? And I mean, chess is a really complicated game. So there's just, it's just a big deal, right? So that's not super common. It's not like a lot of students do that. It's not like a lot of students don't turn it in. Usually this is a very positive assignment. People say they're going to do something, they spend time working on it, and they do it. And now the time working on it could be pretty considerable, right? Like some of you who are talking about working with encryption or making games, you're going to be investing a lot of time making this work. But it's not wasted time. Even if you decide after this class, you know, programming's interesting, but my great passion is physical education, and you want to teach children how to, to be better, more fit, like, that's great. We need super excellent physical education teachers. Will a physical education teacher use Java programming? Probably not. But just the understanding of, of how programming works is just going to make you a more interesting, well-rounded person. So I don't think it could hurt anybody to learn this stuff and that you'll ever look back on your life and say, oh, I, I shouldn't have worked so hard on that final project. What a mistake. 
And that's probably rare. Probably most of you, if you've gotten to this point, you are going to enter the industry. You are going to do lots of cool things with programming because you're not that far away from it, right? You really, you're close to, you're close to having all the skills you need to start making money in this industry. So don't look at this as wasted time. Look at it like a chance to really explore your, your talents and do something really cool. All right, so let's go ahead here and take a look at 11.8 as we make our way through the course. No school Veterans Day. What? No school, but today's not Veterans Day. I think I have something wrong in the syllabus. MVC calendar. How can this be? Why did I put the syllabus wrong? Because uh, I make mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, the holiday is on the 11th. Why did I, Veterans Day is never on, on the 8th. Wow, what a ridiculous thing I put. Okay, no big deal. Let me fix this. And there we go. Fixing this. Okay, so this is going to be easy to change. We can just put here, we can put here, we are going to discuss final project and continue working on GUIs. Discuss final projects and continue working with GUIs. Okay, great. So now we have a proper syllabus, no mistakes on the syllabus. And, well, I mean, there might be more, but if we encounter them, we'll fix them. Okay, at least I had the right week, right? <laughs> this week is Veterans Day. All right, so let's now go back to NetBeans. All right, so we will continue working with NetBeans. We will continue working with NetBeans. So if you have NetBeans installed, go ahead and start it up. Now, there were a few people who were having some issues with installation. Did you work out your NetBeans installation issues? Okay, perfect. That's really good. That's good. And maybe if some people still haven't, okay, good. Worked it out. Good, good, good. So I was going to say if there's some people who still have NetBeans installation issues, we can, I was going to try to like um, connect them with other students during class time, but the best thing is if people all got it installed. Okay, so here we have NetBeans, and the reason why I like to use the GUI builder is because the GUI builder, the GUI builder saves us a lot of time. Okay, we don't have to worry about putting the window in a certain spot through code. we can just put things by dragging and dropping. So the, my computer was just asking, why aren't you using NetBeans 12? And that is a good question because 12 is newer than 11.3, but when I type NetBeans into Windows, 11.3 starts up, which is fine. Okay, so let's go ahead here and let's do the steps from beginning to running it. So we do a new project, and there are different ways of doing it. You could use Maven or Gradle. I'll just pick Ant, and then Java application. And now let's give our Java application a name. So I can call it the Top Golf Top Golf Management Top Golf 
Top Golf Management. There we go. Putting in spaces will look nicer. Okay. So now we are given a regular public class with public static void main. Now this is a console based program. Okay. This is a console based program. Buttons are the first start. So here we run this and it's just going to run it here in the console down here, right? But we want to make a GUI program. So we right click on our package and we say new JFrame form. And now we just give it a name. I'll call mine Top Golf and finish. And now we have this window where we can drag and drop things. So we can have a label that says Top Golf. And then we can have a button. And the button will be confirm reservation. And then we can have here a label. And the label can say something like enter name. And then we're going to put it over here with a text field. And we can put here J text field name. You just right click and then pull up change variable name. Okay. And now under edit text, I can just delete this J text field one and it'll look a lot cleaner, right? Enter name, boom. And now we're going to have a spinner, which is going to be the number of people in the party, or we'll say adults. How about adults? So we can put a label, and the label will say adults and then well maybe number of adults number of adults and then this needs to be moved over oh this needs to be moved over now so you sometimes have to rearrange things okay so then we go here we say number of adults yeah, that looks okay. Then we probably have to move this one up a little bit. This one there. Okay, so we got enter name, number of adults. And then we can just copy and paste this to say number of children. So we can say copy. Actually, duplicate would probably work. Then paste. And then we're just going to rename some things. Like we go here. And we say change variable name, J spinner children. And then we right click on the top and we say J spinner adults. And then we just change this here to number of children. And then we just go here. There we go. Okay, so why don't we have the price here? Or at the time, the time is good too. So the time we could do a slider. So the slider, we'll go here to properties. And you see how I just right click and I go to properties? Why don't we have like for the time, it's going to be from the minimum is one hour and the maximum is eight hours. And then like the ticks will be every one. And then we can change the name of it. So we can go here to, let's see, where's the name? 
Well, the name is J Slider One. I know one way you can rename it is just right click on it and say change variable name. So we can call it J, J Slider Hours. J Slider Hours. But you know what? I also want to show the I want to show the labels. So we should put paint ticks and paint labels. Yes, yes, yes. Now that looks better. So now, now we can see how long they want to pick it. And we'll just put up here. We'll make this the same size as this. And we'll make this the same size. And we'll make this the same size. Yeah, that's looking better. And then here we can put the... Here we can put the um, number of hours. Okay. Okay, very good. So this is just laying it out, right? This is just putting everything where it needs to be. And then we should also have the price. Okay, so the price we can put price we can put in a label right here and we can just right click on it and say change variable name j label price and we'll just put price here okay so now let's double click on confirm reservation and we can read in all this stuff here so Let's, let's do it. Let's get the number of adults. We'll say int num adults equals. And now we have to think what's the name of our adults. Well, our adults are under J spinner adults. Okay, J spinner adults. So we're back here. We say J spinner adults dot. I think it's just get value. Just get value. And then I think we probably have to convert that to an int. So we just cast it. So we put in here int. And now we're going to say int num children equals j spinner children dot get value. So now we've got the adults. Now we've got the children. And then we're going to need the we're going to need the number of hours. So we can say int num hours equals j, what was it called? It was called j slider hours. So we can say j slider hours, probably get value. Yes, get value. And that does come as an int. And now we can just do some math. So we can say, um, int total equals num adults times I don't know maybe they charge like eight dollars an hour for the adults and then they charge num children times six dollars an hour and then we need to take this whole total right like um, this times num hours times num hours. So that that makes sense. And so then with this total, we can put it to the J label. So we can say J label price, and we have to use set text dot set text is going to be the dollar sign plus the total plus, um, that's fine, right? Just the dollar sign plus total. So this is the code that we don't know if it works yet, right? I'll post the first iteration on Discord because we haven't tested it. We don't know if this works. But I'm going to post it because this way, even if there are some changes that need to be made, then you can see the changes. So we right-click here on top golf. Uh, dot Java and we say run file okay 
So we've got the name is going to be Juan Gomez. And he's coming with three adults and no children. And they're going to be there for one hour. Okay, so three times eight should give us 24. Three times eight should give us 24. So we confirm the reservation. And it says, yes, three times eight is 24. And then he wants to add a child. And this should add six more. So it should go up to 30. Good, it goes up to 30. And we double it. Now it's 60. Now it's 90. And then 240. He comes with a whole bunch of people. Right, pretty soon he's spending $1,200 for his big party at uh, Top Golf, and now it's getting really outrageous. Right, and you can just see like the price keeps going higher and higher. So it looks like everything's working. It looks like there's no real errors with this problem here. But I'm going to send this to a zip. So let me just go here to File export project to zip and we'll just I'll just put it to my documents and we'll call this one topgolf.zip all right so then we just go up here topgolf.zip and now you can actually see the project that we just created so you could download it and install it on um, hat beans. So once you get everything laid out, it's really not that hard. And you can make other like really cool features. You see there are lots of swing controls. They have passwords and editor panes and trees. We can't go over every single thing in, in swing. But I do have some other days in the syllabus that are, are designed for working with Swing. And we will keep working on cool features. But a lot of the thing for your final project is you're just looking up the features on your own, right? And you're thinking, okay, how can I make this work? How can I make that work? But overall, it's not that hard to make a GUI with, with NetBeans because you're dragging and you're dropping. So, let's see. Thoughts about what I just made and the code. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that we can do that really, really fast. That's a really simple one. So let's do that one right now. Okay. So let's go find a nice picture of golf. And let's go here to images. And I don't know. That looks like a nice golf. And we'll also look for, we'll look for the, mm, I mean, this one looks good. Let's use this one. So we can, that one's so big though. Let's get a smaller one. So we don't have to worry about resizing it. So we'll do medium. And how big is this one? Well, let's try it. Let's just see what it looks like. So we go back here to NetBeans, and what we do is we drag in a label, okay? And then we right-click on the label, and we change the variable name to JLabel image. It could be anything. It could be, could be JLabel6. 
And then we're going to get rid of the text inside there. And we're going to resize it. And probably needs to be bigger than that. So we can just resize it again. And then we just go here to properties again. And we're looking for icon, right? So we go to icon and we click on the three dots and we're just gonna get this external image. So I downloaded it, but you can also use an, a URL. So we need to click on these three dots, right? Click on the three dots. And then we're gonna look for images. So we go back here to images. So pictures, and then we go to, what do we call it? Um, what is it called like golf icon or something? Golf one. All right, where is this? Details. Hmm. Two seventeen. Modify. There. Oh, there it is. Golf one i stock. Okay. So we say open. We say import it. Oh God, it's it's way too big. <laughs> and so then we, yeah, this is too big. Even this I thought would be okay, but it's too big. So now if we run this here, well, we don't want debug file. Well, yeah, debug file won't be a problem. So if we look at it, we can see it's it's just a little too big right because it doesn't all fit on one screen so if i could resize it and then move this up that might work Now this I want to get rid of. Let me try to delete this. This vertical fixed gap, I want to delete that. This can move up a little bit. And then we can select all of these. Then move these up. Oh no, I wanted to move everything. Sometimes it's kind of tricky when you're moving these things. You have to really click in the right spot. Now we can move it. I think everything will fit in the screen now. So if we run run this file. Yes, yes, this looks a lot nicer. So now, uh, you know what? It's still a little too big. And it's got this horizontal, on the, it's got this thing on the top I want to get rid of. This thing, we move this, and then we move this. And then we move this. Yeah, let's try this. So we run this file. And almost, almost. I'm just trying to get everything to fit on one screen. All right, let's see. And 
and now it looks pretty good. Yeah, this looks good. Now, this side we have to work on. But, you know, sometimes, like, the time... I mean, you see the image, right? Like, that was the that was the thing that was asked. But just playing with the different sizing, that's, that's time-consuming. You have to sit there and play with it. But, I mean, it definitely is worth it because come up with like a final project that's really good, you know, or whatever, whatever you're working on. Okay, so that's the top golf with image. And there we go. So the answer to the question is yes. All right. So let's go ahead and close this down here. And let's go back here. And we did talk about the final project. So let's go here. No, this one has to be refreshed. We did discuss the final project, and we did continue working with the GUI. Um, let's go check on our memer situation here. So on Memer, we have an assignment that's still open called Math Practice. And you, you do have due dates, right? Like, you can turn it in late. So what are some of the challenging things that you encountered doing this, those of you who finished? What was challenging about Math Practice? Ignoring the string input, okay. The most challenging part is the Memer platform. I'm used to emailing the program or using Blackboard something else. Okay. Doing the quit input and displaying the code again if not quitted. Okay, sounds good. Probably the easiest thing is just to use the Memer IDE. Then you don't have to upload, download anything. Then you just log in and you just do all your coding in here. Now you don't have to down now you don't have to go to Replit and download it and upload it and like that's just time that you don't need to spend. So if we go here to spring 20 no, we're not at spring. We're in fall. If we go here to fall 2021 and we look at what are we currently doing? Math practice, math teacher. Then you just go here and you just type out all your num all your solutions. So you say, okay, return n plus one, n1 plus n2, return n1 minus n2, and then you go down here, you make your while loop while true uh, let's see so some people say it's easier to work in the IDE well you know like that IDEs are really good for code organization and you can you can do that but I mean for something this short it's it's not a lot of lines of code probably just working in this IDE is is good too I mean there's no one right answer that's why like how you how you do it is up to you like if you want to download something and work on your IDE or if you want to put it in Replit and then download it back and put it back in in Memer that's really that's really your choice so um, 
Yeah, no, if you like it, if you like IntelliJ and you're comfortable with IntelliJ, then that's fine. It's it's not a big deal downloading something and then working on it and then re-uploading it. I was just suggesting that when it is a pretty short project like this and you don't need to worry about too many things, you're just focusing in on the logic, which may be time consuming, right? Like if you're if you're getting tripped up, you could spend hours debugging something. There's no there's no doubt in my mind that you can spend hours debugging something, even if it's short. Because the hard part, here, let me show you guys something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something about C++. So we go here to, all right. look at C++. Students will use vectors to store data for a computation. The mode of a data set is the item that appears most frequently. Write a program to read in numbers between 1 and 100 and then report the mode. If more than one number appears most frequently, choose the highest number. Output a line with the result in this format. The most frequent value is 42 appearing nine times, okay? So this, this is the instructions here. Now, do you think this is going to be a lot of lines of code to solve this? Just what's your guess? Like, how many lines to solve this? Okay, 10, like it, it's not going to be a huge number. Some people might be 20, some people 30, but it's, it's really, it's not like huge, huge lines of code. But there are little things you have to get right in order to get a working solution. So when students in my C++ class are frustrated and their code isn't working, it's not about like, the length of the code. It's just about aligning the logic and aligning what they're typing with what's needed for the solution. And I do offer guidance in terms of, well, try this, try this, try this. Like people write me messages on, on Discord all the time. The issue is it actually is not beneficial if I just give too much help, if I say, no, do this, do this, do this, do this, then they're not really struggling with it. And there should be some struggling when you're programming, right? Because programming is challenging. So let's, let's go ahead and do this one together. Why not? So we can say um, bool to continue to continue equals true. This is good C++ review. Then we'll say while to continue is true. Just go ahead in here. And then we can read in the current number. So we'll have int number and cn the number. cn into the number. Now we will make a vector of integers. And we'll call this one numbers and we'll just do everything in steps so we'll say c in the number and if the number is less than one or the number is greater than 100 then go ahead and say to continue to continue equals false Otherwise, we're going to say numbers dot pushback this number. Okay, so at this point, we should have just read in everything into this vector. So let's just print out, see out 
numbers.size. And then we'll put a new line here. So we'll say new line. All right, let's see. Random question. Is there a quick way to get out or exit the parentheses without having to click when coding? There is a shortcut in C++. Hmm. Does anybody else know? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> shift. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that might be like IDE dependent, right? That's IDE dependent. So like if you're using IntelliJ or NetBeans, I would just I would just try to search for it. Okay, so let's see here. Here we have three, so it reads in the first three. That's good. So now we need to we need to keep track of how many times these things appeared, right? So we could use a map or we could use an array. So we can just have int, um, we'll just call it mode, and we can just loop through. We can just loop through all of these numbers in numbers. We'll say for int n within numbers. And then we'll just put in here mode at n plus plus. Mode at n plus plus. Okay. So now we know what's the largest. So now if we loop through the mode, we can say for int m within mode, and we'll find largest. int largest equals, I don't know, the first position, mode at 0. And then we're going to say, if at any point we find one that's larger, that's now the largest. So if m is greater than largest, then largest equals m. And then at the end, Ah, you know what? We shouldn't use the enhanced for loop because we're going to need to know the position too. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that. So let's say int m equals zero, and then wait. So with the largest m is less than one hundred one m plus plus. Okay, so if the mode at m is greater than the largest, then largest equals mode at m. And then here we are going to say the most frequent value was the largest. And no, no, no. So the largest is going to be mode m. And then we can have the appearing appearing equals okay appearing should equal to this appearing should equal to this mode m and then we have here largest is equal to m so largest is equal to m so let's try this so we say the most frequent value was the most frequent value was largest and then we say appearing, and then we put appearing times. So let's run this here and see if that's right. And I failed everything. <laughs> so it's the most frequent value was 100 appearing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Way, way off, way off. So this is definitely not right at all. So what's the problem here? Um, m equals 0, well, m is less than 101. If mode at m is greater than the largest, oh, you know what? Because at the first position, oh, I see the problem. Mode, mode at 0, we got to set that equal to 0. You got to set that equal to zero because we started with reading in the numbers at one. So that was an off by one error. 
Okay, and now we are getting still way off. So we got to go back here and fix it. And we see program reads in numbers 1 to 100. Um, we continue while it's less than that. If the... If mode M is greater than largest, then appearing equals mode M and largest equals M. And then we put the most frequent value. It was largest and it was appearing, appearing times. So this isn't a terribly difficult problem, but you know, I teach the C++ class and I'm still right now live coding in front of you running into an error, right? There's some kind of logical error at this point. Um, for n in numbers, mode n plus plus. Let's, you know what you do in a situation like this? You just print out. So let's go through for int m within mode. Let's print it out. System C out M N line. Okay, so why am I doing this with you? I'm just showing you like some debugging in real time, how I encounter a problem where I can't figure it out. Okay, so here is some problems. Look at what I'm seeing. I'm seeing some crazy numbers here. It's, we're getting 65,280, negative 16 million. What is going on here? This is not correct. We are getting way, way off. So for 10, yes, this is way, way off. So what is happening at 10? Why is the number jumping to 65,280? What is the problem? So for... The numbers, we are pushing back the number, and then we are looping through, we are looping through all the numbers. Yes, yeah, something is way off with the numbers that we're putting in here. Way off with the numbers we're putting in. And this is how you figure it out. You put in little debug statements, like you little put in little print statements, and you run it. And let's see what's going on with this. We're putting in four, five, six, three. Four, five, six, three. Okay, so we do put in four, we do put in five, we do put in six. So we're putting in all the correct numbers into numbers. This, this part works. We're putting the values into the vector. But then when we loop through, hmm, we loop through all 100. Oh, but why do we need to loop through 100? That's too far. We don't need to loop through 100. We need to loop through the size of, we need to loop through the size of numbers. We say numbers.size, okay? Now I think it should work. So we run these tests. And we still get failures. Okay, why are we getting failures? Um, the most frequent value was zero, appearing zero times. Hey, this is crazy. So we're saying here, if mode at M is greater than largest, then appearing equals to mode, largest equals to M. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this code to you and I'm going to ask you for your help in debugging this. Please help me debug this. Okay? This is the question up here, right? This is the question up here. And this is the code that I have right now. So everybody in here has taken C++. Everybody can work with C++. Help me figure out what am I doing wrong? I'm making some kind of mistake right now. Something, something is not right.
Ooh, okay. I think I'm getting close. I think I'm getting close here. So it's saying... Okay, two appears twice. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see why I'm getting it wrong now. I'm getting things wrong now because I'm printing things out more than once. And so I gotta take this out, I gotta take this out. I gotta take out all my debugging statements now. So let's try to rerun it. Okay, now I pass two, okay? So this is the improved code right here. So I've passed two. Now, there's a third problem. And the third problem is, it says, if more than one number appears more, most frequently, choose the highest number, okay? Output a line with the result in this format. So, in this case, we're saying if mode is greater than the largest, then we set that. But at the end here, we need to figure out what if, what if we have numbers that are the same, okay? Like what if two appears two times and three appears two times? Then we pick three, right? If two appears the same number of times as three, we pick three because three is bigger. Okay, so now I'm not going to do the talking for this one. You propose a way of solving this. Now before when the student was saying could we do this in 10 lines? Yes, we could because you can use maps. You can make this code way, way shorter. I'm, I'm sort of throwing this out there like an introductory C++ class. But I want you to think about this. How do we figure out, knowing the mode, you had this problem, you had this problem in um, Memer also? I'm not, I wasn't sure if, I already, if I've already given this one. Oh, I've already given this one. Okay, okay. So... So this is like totally refreshing your memory. Okay, well, if that's the case, then we're just going to leave it aside and we're going to move on past it. I, ha I had forgotten that I had already assigned this one to you. All right, so now let's talk about, we're almost at the end of class right now. What's really the most important thing? And the, the answer would be you could just go backwards and then if they're equal, you just pick, you just pick the first one that's the biggest. So, all right, so right now, what are we talking about here? We are talking about, we have about a month left in class. Okay, if we go look at class syllabus, 7 a.m. to 8.40, and we scroll down here, we see in one month time, we're gonna start showing the final projects. Okay, one month you'll start showing them. In one month, you will start showing your final projects in class. Okay, so one day we'll do seven, the next day we'll do seven, the next day we'll do seven. So seven during the class time makes it a little bit, a little bit tight, but as long as everybody is ready to go and they show their code and they show their project, we can make it work. Now, why do I say seven? I say seven because there were withdrawals after the first test, people left. There are people who are still enrolled in the class who are just not logging in. Like right now we have 19, 19 in class now, okay? So if it, if it happens that one class has eight and another class has nine, that's, that's okay. We can make that work because we do have an hour and 40 minutes, so that, that's a pretty long time. Out of 100 minutes, even if there's 10 people, that's 10 minutes, so it's, it's not a big deal. We can make it work. But um, you will show your final projects in class, 
if if you do something with hardware you can make a video right like you can make a video and we can play it during class and then we can talk about it afterwards right so that 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 is possible well a student a student was talking about they want to uh like automate at home stuff work with lighting things like that so yeah different people do things like that sure i had a student with an aquarium project a few years ago that was really cool yeah iot type stuff you can use java for that Yeah, there's there's a lot of great stuff that that students can work with. And just like when we were working with that mode problem, when you encounter problems, you just have to solve them, right? So you will encounter problems with your project, but you just have to keep working at them. And then you'll be able to finish them. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead here and take attendance. Okay, got attendance done. Um, when I realized that we had already done the vector problem, probably became really silly to keep solving it. <laughs> so anyways, um, I think we're finished with everything today. Just go ahead and post your idea on Freer School. And that's about it. So have a great day. And I will see you next time.